means that whenever you put something out there, other people are usually interested in that. So again, um, I reached my goal of the views that I wanted. Um, as far as the publicity is concerned, because people, uh, that's one of the main questions that people were asking me, they're like, how did you get all of that attention? Like, what was the strategy behind it that you did? So, um, again, that loan that I took out was mostly so I could, like, not do a day job. So I just was, like, living off of that loan so I could kind of do a lot of this myself. And then hired a couple of underlings to help me out with some of the things that I wanted to do. And one of the ways that I was reaching out to people was that I was individually um, instead of doing it on this mass scale of like mass email blasts, I was actually like handpicking and selecting some um, social influencers of popular blogs and websites. A big, a nice little trick that I'd like to uh, introduce you to with that is, let's say you read the Huffington Post, and you love the Huffington Post articles, and maybe they write an article about something that you're kind of interested in, always look to see who that author is and email that person directly. Um, a lot of people don't do that. I know that sounds really weird. A lot of people just take that route of like, I don't know how to do it, or info at Huffington Post, and they just leave it alone. No, you want to go to that individual, tell them that you're very interested in whatever they're doing. Nine times out of 10, they'll answer you back. So then you're creating that personal relationship with them. So then when you're ready to, to pitch them something, they're usually much more eager to uh, sell that, whatever you're trying to promote out there for you. So because of this short film, uh, it opened up the floodgate of, uh, of uh, opportunities for me. Because then, um, which I didn't really see coming, I started speaking with more entrepreneurs, more companies, and the first question that they asked me was like, so how did you do all this stuff? You did all this stuff by yourself? And uh, because we're, we'd be willing to pay you a ton of money and just build a team for you to do that for us. So that's how that, so just as doing this short film, investing in myself, it opened up the floodgate <laughs> things. Now I'm the head of creative and mar uh, head of creative and marketing for a tech startup called Buddy Truck, and Buddy Truck is the Uber for uh, moving. Um, <laughs> we right? Heard, we heard that if everybody took their donations, you had a, a founder of a, of a VC firm uh -huh. come in and say that like a lot of people say like you're the Uber for exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly, and I'm going to tell you the reason for that is so uh, one of the uh, did they explain why people say that? Yeah, and she was. People say that all the time. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't even make sense. Yeah. Um, the difference between pitching yourself to the press, pitching yourself to investors, right? Um, press will always help you because press is free. Um, when you connect with press, they put out stories for you and they help you find more investors because an investor will obviously read something about you and be interested in you. So for example, um, I got in touch with Forbes uh, so um, in Forbes, uh, I got Buddy Truck in Forbes. Forbes says that we're going to be the next Uber, right? Uh, can't get away from it, even if I tried. Uh, so I just say we are the Uber for moving. Uh, we just launched our second location in Austin, Texas, just a few days ago. We're located in Los Angeles. We hope to hit 10 major cities by the end of this year. And I am the creative force behind it. Um, I am the social media person behind it. Um, I'm a shareholder now. Um, and that's all because I made this little short film uh, that I invested in myself. So the way that Buddy Truck separates itself from Uber is that we sort of um, handle it in a more grassroots way. We personalize our brand a lot more, and we actually promote ourselves as the underdog. So if Uber did decide to come in and say, hey, we're going to do this, <laughs> don't use Buddy Truck because Uber's here, well, that's going to backfire for them. Um, when it comes to the publicity of that. Um, they would be much smarter just buying us very quietly, acquiring us, and then just saying, oh, Buddy Truck still exists, that you know, we just own them. Um, so that, and, and actually, that is a goal. That's not, so, like, trust me, when if Uber were to come in tomorrow and say, hey, we're gonna offer you X amount of dollars for Buddy Truck, I can guarantee you that would be a discussion. Nobody's gonna close the door on that. And that's something that you should always be open-minded about. Any other questions? Uh, what were some of the biggest lessons that you've learned going through the whole process of going on your own? It's tough. Um, it's not. Uh, there's no. Uh, there's no book. There's no guide for it. Everybody's different. That's one of the the biggest lessons I I learned. 
uh, in my career. It's something that somebody taught me a long time ago. Don't compare yourself to others. Uh, you're not Steve Jobs, you're not Mark Zuckerberg, you're not Bill Gates. Uh, so you need to understand who you are. You need to understand what your business plan is, what your goals are. You need to make sure that that's written out for you. You make sure to visualize that and stay hungry. Um, there's gonna be days where you're tired. There's gonna be days where you're broke. There's gonna be days where you really don't, you're not too sure if this is a good idea, uh, but you have to stay focused. You have to keep moving forward and you have to set goals for yourself. And you have to set realistic goals for yourself. So again, my goal for this, just one of them, was 20,000 hits on Vimeo. So I got 50,000, right? So that's even twice, that's twice than what I was expecting. And the 50,000 wasn't from somebody that's like, I really like your short. It was actually from somebody that could actually provide an opportunity for me for my career. So that's the way I was looking at it. I didn't care if I got 10 views, to be honest with you, as long as those 10 views was somebody that could make me move forward. Um, and you always want to be able to, um, I'm sure you guys hear this a lot, brainstorm with each other, uh, keep each other connected, uh, always have like a tight-knit group that you can bounce ideas off of. Because some of this, being an entrepreneur, is a lonely process. Not everybody's gonna see the world that you do, uh, the world uh, the same way that you do. So it's really good to start, you know, start doing that thing where you're keeping that group of certain people close to you where you can bounce ideas off of. That helped a lot. Um, and I could have easily just, you know, tried to get a bunch of people together. Hey, let's, you put in some money, you put in some money, we'll all make a name for ourselves. I said, no, I'm just gonna bet on myself. Uh, and I'm gonna like surround myself around people that are even smarter than I am. Uh, that's also another lesson I like to throw out there. Surround yourself with people that are way smarter than you. I'm the dumb one. <laughs> so in order to make this film, you said you took five minutes. So if you were to make another film that you knew, like you have a feeling that it's gonna be really good, mm -hmm. will you be will you be okay to That's a really that's a really good question. Um, that's a two-part answer. Uh, one, if I did it again, I actually would know uh, what to do moving forward, right? Because I've already done it, so I already know what the pros and cons are. Um, two, because of this, I will never have to do that. <laughs> I love you, Chris. Boldest thing I've done on social media. Okay, so uh, growth hacking. <laughs> uh, growth hacking. I created a Twitter account for a U.S. Marine. His name is John Ames. And uh, what I do for certain companies is I promote their brands through his Twitter account. And tons of times people tweet me and they're like, "Thank you for your service," uh, and they believe that.